Uh, now, losing a loved one affects each one of us very differently and how we cope once they've gone can be just so difficult to talk about. Like, it's the, it's the one subject you just want to avoid almost, isn't it? Yeah, but unavoidable because it happens to all of us at some stage in our lives, doesn't it? When Colleen Nolan lost several members of her family in just a very short few years, she was forced to confront her own relationship with grief. And she's written it all down and what she's learned. And it's brilliant because she's going to share it with all of us and help everybody out there. It's a brand new book. And uh, Shan's got it in her hands here at the moment. Yeah, Colleen. that's it. It is called A Hand to Hold. I think this is such a good idea, Colleen, because so many people suffer alone or they don't feel like they can bring it up to family members. So this is almost a way of you being a bit of a, a little hug. That's it. Well, thank you. That's exactly what I wanted it to be because I did a podcast about grief and when I was asked to do it, I thought, that's a bit depressing. You know, <laughs> how am I going to make that funny? Yeah. Um, <laughs> but of course I did. Um, but it, it was really interesting to get all these people in talking about how they've coped with grief. Um, how they've then since gone on to talk about funerals. And, and like you said, it's just a topic that everyone's terrified of. Mm -hmm. And yet it's something we all have in common. Whether we like it or not, when hopefully not for many, many years, it's coming to us all. And we need to be open about it, There's, you know, because people grieve. The thing I noticed as well is people grieve so differently. I never met two people that grieve the same. And everyone's wondering if is this right? Should I feel like this? How do I get out of bed in the morning? How do I carry on with life? And a lot of people, like you said, don't have anyone to talk to. You know, I come from a very big Irish family, so I'm very lucky that we all surround each other in our grief. And again, we all grieve differently. Um, and I just wanted it to be a book that somebody, God forbid, they're going through it, or they know someone else who's going through it, or they don't know how to deal with someone who's going through it. That's the other thing. You know, we've had people cross the street because they don't know what to say to us. When we lost Bernie and my sister Linda, when she lost her husband, you know, friends she'd known years, she never heard from again because they didn't know what to say. And it kind of takes you down that path of knowing what to say. And it's better to say something than nothing. Um, so there's, so, there's loads of helplines in there. Um, from specialists, people at the back. There's lovely poetry in there. Yes, some of it's sad, but also some of it is funny. You know, the, the stories that I got about what people want for their funerals, we were crying laughing, <laughs> or what had happened at funerals and how they laughed. And it doesn't all have to be doom and gloom. There's nothing quite like an Irish funeral, though, is there? No, well, Just... what I learned about Irish funerals... Honestly. Wow, I've never actually been to a proper Irish funeral. Oh, really? Yeah, well, oh, I'll bring you along to one. No! <laughs> Is no, it one I of those where everybody the... just gets involved oh. almost? No, but the body's in the lounge. Oh, the night what? before, yeah, the night before... <laughs> you, open. We put, we put the body out in, a ho in their home or the, the, the funeral home, and then everybody comes along. Yeah. And it's, it's really weird, because you end up kind of with the hand on them going, how's work anyway? How's, <laughs> how's life? Looking over the... It oh. becomes so normalised yeah, and casual. And then you tell funny stories over the body. It's, I know it sounds really weird. I remember my dad, we were hiding cans of Guinness and chocolate <laughs> in the coffin before the priest put the lid on. I mean, Stop it. But what it does do is it, it, it kind of... It just normalises it, it takes away the taboo and it and helps with it, the next yeah. process. And because that's, that's the hard bit, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, exactly, and we don't do that over here. And we don't talk about death or, no. or what we want. It's so important to let your family, no matter what age you are, young or old, to let your family know what kind of funeral you want. Because the amount of families that splinter over a funeral because they all have their opinions... You know, my sister Bernie literally left a whole note of every, who was going in what car, what flowers she wanted, what songs she wanted, how she wanted it. And honestly, on the day, which is so stressful enough, it was, it was so lovely for all of us to know that we couldn't argue because no. that's what Bernie wanted. And that's when it brought it home to me of how important it is. Didn't she say to you, you can cry, but for two weeks? Two weeks. She and then you, you get over two it. Weeks. She said, cry for two weeks a lot because I deserve it. <laughs> and then I want you to get up and carry on with it. You see, that's so good, isn't it? It, it is because, you know, two weeks down the line, I still didn't want to get up. I still, I didn't want to do anything, to be honest. Yeah, but there was a but lot of... But I kept of... putting that, I kept hearing her go, come on now. Come on. There was a lot of loss in a short space of time in your Yeah, life, there was. It? You know, well, there was a lot of loss, a lot of bad news as well. And, um, you know, I'd lost my mum and dad, I lost my sister-in-law, we lost Bernie, we lost Linda's husband. My auntie then passed not so long ago. So there has been a lot of loss. Um, 
but Bernie's Bernie's talk to me is the one that's pushed me through all of it because you do have to carry on. And you know what? You can be fine for six months. That's the thing about grief. You're fine for six months and then out of the blue it oh. hits you again. There's no time, there's no right or wrong way of doing it. And I think this book hopefully helps people. There's a very that. weird six month hit after the person yeah. passes. Yeah. And everyone goes through six, yeah. seven months and boosh. Yeah, you think it, you're fine yeah. and then one thing sets you off. Mm. Yeah, Do you that reckon there's um, also a lot of guilt attached to sort of not so moving on, but you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, well, I can't have a holiday. I can't laugh. I can't, I can't look happy. Laugh. So much guilt. And that's the thing that came across in the podcast. They'd all grieve differently, but the one thing they had in common was this element of guilt. Yeah. Did I do enough? I didn't get to say goodbye properly. Um, I should have done this. And now I'm going on holiday or I've met someone. Yeah. You know, even it could be six months, a year, two years, but whenever it is, they feel guilty about moving on. And that it's covered in the book as well. What's the biggest learning? The biggest learning for me? Mm -hmm. um, I guess that life has to go on and it does go on. And in actual fact, this is terrible. None of it matters. None of this matters. Do you know what I mean? I used to get so stressed and down about things. Now I go, I bet Bernie wishes she was here getting down about her tax bill or her next job or... And it puts everything into perspective and now I grasp each day whenever that I can. I and I'm not that. scared to say no anymore. If I don't want to do something, I go, no. Yeah, life is too short. It's too short. Do what you want to do. Yeah. And you've got your girls around you, you know, you've been with the Loose Women girls who have helped you through oh, most of your life, haven't they? They're my surrogate sisters, all of them. They've got me through everything yeah. in my life. If we don't plug it. this book one more time, we'd be in terrible trouble. Well, there you go. We'll be going to an Irish funeral. Hold is out tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you so <laughs> Thank much. You Thank you so for having much. me. Thank, Thank you, you for visiting our This Morning YouTube channel. We upload new content every day, so go ahead, hit that subscribe button. You don't want to miss out, and we'll see you in the morning.